and that I feel are prophetic instructions for the finish. And I want to start part one of that. And I want you to get your notepads and make sure that you get as much down uh, as you can today because I believe uh, that in order for you to reach whatever goal and whatever vision and whatever aspiration and whatever dream the Lord has for your life, for your family, and for your business, for your heart, for your spirituality, for your ministry, and for your purpose, you, you're going to have to learn how to start preparing for the finish long before you get there. Uh, I believe many times that we don't arrive to the finish of things because we don't prepare our testimonies. We don't prepare what we believe God's going to do. We wait until the battle's over to shout. We That's wait right. until the battle's over to praise. We wait until the battle's oh. over to start to talk about it. But whenever you are expecting and there's anticipation in your heart for the goal that's right in front of you, you'll learn how to prepare for it. Yes. Amen. Many Amen. years ago, I shared a message entitled, Prepare Your Testimony. You're going to have to right now, right now, right now, even before it works out in the natural, start to prepare how you're going to act. That's right. Start to prepare what you're going to say. Start to testify in your mirror. Testify to your friends and your partners about the goodness of God. And many times they'll look at you and they'll say, well, you got it already? Or it's already there? It's already done? You'll say, let me tell you something. That kingdom come on earth as it's already done in heaven. It's done somewhere. Yes. I said it's done somewhere and whenever you're rising up in your faith and your faith is being elevated you learn how to prepare for the finish long before you see it so in, in the book of Joshua chapter 1 one of the things the Lord was sharing with me and, and rose up in my heart very strong is that whenever you are preparing for it to happen whenever you are preparing for it to come to pass you're going to have to put more energy into your deliverance decision making than you ever have a lot of times we really think that deliverance is getting on the floor and spinning up and all this kind of stuff and somebody laying hands on you but deliverance is a decision deliverance is your ability to decide today that whatever I'm looking forward to that I'm going to use the wisdom of God the strategy of God all right the instructions of God all right to prepare and to get things in order whenever the prophet Hezekiah went with the prophet uh, uh went to uh uh, the prophet Isaiah went to Hezekiah and told Hezekiah to get ready or right, you're going to die. He said, get your house in order and you're going to die. One of the things that Hezekiah did was, Hezekiah, after uh, Isaiah gave him the prophetic word of God, uh, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he begins to remind God of the things that he had done for him. But Lord of God, it is going to be very important that during your time of waiting that you are waiting on God but not waiting on purpose right, right. you are waiting on God but you are not slow in your purpose and many times the enemy wants you to pause he wants you to sit down he doesn't want you to fulfill the assignment why because you're waiting he doesn't want you to keep preaching why because you're waiting he doesn't want you to encourage people why because you're waiting he's trying to give you a reason to pause but you're going to have to rise up in the power me to do. Because much of your deliverance is going to come as you go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said much of your deliverance in this situation or whatever things you're experiencing right now, it will occur as you go. It will occur as you go. And many times you're trying to figure out why God has not done it yet, why it's not being fulfilled yet, why it's not being manifested yet. It is because your feet are too still. You're going to have to teach the devil and train the adversary that my feet still work. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I said you have to train him that my feet still work. That the weapons of warfare that you are forming against me have not paralyzed me. Yes. The enemy 
wants you to get to an, a mobile state. He wants to mobilize you. He wants to get you as that man was in John 5 at that pool of Bethesda going, God, waiting on somebody to put him in the water, waiting on somebody to drag him near the pool, waiting on somebody, waiting on the angel, waiting on the angel. Jesus was right there in front of him and instead of him recognizing the Messiah, recognizing his deliverance, recognizing his victory, he starts to give God excuses on why he could not get up. And many of us are giving God excuses why we can't get up. Why I can't do it. Why I can't fulfill the assignment. Why I can't uh, uh, do what God's called me to do. Whether it's business or whether it's family. Whether it's ministry. Whether it's in your, in your heart. Because our heart needs work. Yes. Talk to me, church. I said our heart needs work. And this is what's wrong with some believers who are waiting on God. You, you, why you're waiting on God? You're not doing your heart work. You're not doing your heart work. Your heart can become a weight to you. Your heart can become an anchor to you where you can't move, glory to God. Why you're waiting on God? Why you're doing what God calls you to do? You're going to have to work on your heart. Say, I need to work on my heart. The reason why uh, Abraham had to go back and rescue Lot all of these times, go over and over again, Lot getting captured, Lot getting stuck in Sodom and Gomorrah, is because when God gave him the word in Genesis chapter 12, his heart was not detached from where he had come from. You know they're talking. So when God was trying to move him forward, he was weighted down by his own heart. What parts of your heart are weighting you? down I'm mobilizing you glory to God where you are hearing the word of God but your heart is keeping you anchored are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yeah. All right, so you're, you're going to have to put more energy into your decision, your deliverance decisions. Deliverance decisions. Somebody say deliverance decisions. Deliverance. This means decisions that tie you to deliverance because there are some things that you can decide to do that you don't even have to pray over. You don't have to pray through. You don't even have to wait on God. All you have to do is make a decision and guess what? Your one decision, Lord God, is going to be the connection to your deliverance. That one thing that you decide to do, Lord God, and you'll look at it and you'll say, well, God, wasn't that easy? And God will say, yes, it was that easy. Many of, many of us have been in pause too long. It's time for us to get moving. So there in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, uh, uh, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, after God had, had brought had brought uh, uh, them out of Egypt, and and Moses had been so very uh, so very diligent uh, in in uh, bringing them out. He was so very patient. He was so very kind. Uh, one of the things you're gonna have to do as you're preparing to move uh, in this next level of dimension, you're going to have to put honor on the people and the things that brought you over. One of the reasons why many of God's people are in pause from moving forward today is they neglect to honor the bridges that carried them over. And many times people have been bridges to us that when we got over we forgot to put honor on them. It's great to be happy in your now. It's great to look forward to your future. But you have to put honor on your Moses. Hallelujah. Put honor on your Moses. And, and beloved of God, when I say put honor on your Moses, it doesn't mean that everything that your Moses did was right. Because Moses got angry. Moses smote the rock. Moses had drink rebels drink. When God didn't tell him to cause them to drink that way, he got angry and he started to get frustrated. So everything that Moses did wasn't right. But one of the things that Moses was, Moses was a bridge that brought them to their Joshua. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? Moses was the thing that brought them out of Pharaoh's house. Are you here? Brought them out of conscience into a place, Lord God, where they can worship freely. It wasn't area. Everything wasn't right where you come from. But that one thing they did right was keep you alive until you got connected to the thing that would give you life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people with your life support. Yes, 
until God brought you to a place that you could breathe on your own. Yes, yes. So what is God saying? God said, put on on your Moses. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Now we don't want to we don't want to do this, glory to God, sometimes because of the things that happen through the transition. And let me tell you something, you have to be patient and diligent when you are when someone is leading you through transition. That's because right. sometimes communication get, gets lost That's in right. the translation. Yes. I said sometimes communication gets lost in the translation. Lord God, we're trying to come out of Pharaoh's house and Lord God, deal with all these people. Lord God, emotions get crazy. Frustrations, Lord God. Sometimes working with people in the house of God. Sometimes things get frustrated. But you don't have to say, I'm not going to let the communication get lost in the translation. I understand we're all trying to go somewhere. We're all trying to get things done. Lord God, it might have not have come out of her mouth the right way or he might not seem to act the right way with me but I understand Lord God that we're all moving yes, we're all moving towards something we're all moving towards somewhere so I've got to be patient say patient, patient. Yes. be patient with your Moses and put honor on your Moses so that's the first thing put honor, put honor on your Moses I don't care if you say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the bridges and the connections. Yeah. Lord God, because sometimes God will intentionally cause you to pause until you become grateful. Wow. God will intentionally cause you to pause until you become honorable, yes. glory to God. Yeah. Until you start to say, Father, I thank you for her. I thank you for him. I might not be in connection to them no more, but I thank you for the years. Lord God, they yeah. yelling, talking, they fed yeah. me. The years, they encouraged me, yeah. glory to God. It might, not, it might have gotten a little funky at the end, but Father, yeah. I I'm not even paying attention to that. I give you praise for that because it was you working through them. It was you that killed my son, that rescued my life through her, that rescued my life through him. I'm not going to be ungrateful. Hallelujah. God will intentionally cause your life to be on pause when you forget about the seeds that have been sown through the hands of people. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So after all of these things, Moses gets frustrated That's to the right. point where God says, because you got frustrated and irritated and you caused the people to get you to lose your eyes off the assignment. Number two, don't you allow people to get your eyes off the assignment just because you're frustrated with them. Now you don't want to do the assignment no more because you're frustrated with your team members. You don't want to do the assignment anymore because you're frustrated with your brothers and sisters who might might not show up, y'all ain't talking, who might not put their hand to the plow, that's none of your business. Be patient and keep your hand on the plow. Y'all ain't talking, don't you look back, don't you stay home, don't you stay in pause, because your eyes are on other people and other things. Y'all ain't talking, you've got to be laser focused. You will let your frustrations with other people stop you. From doing your assignment. Moses had done that, beloved. Moses let people get him frustrated to the point that he had worked all that time, all of that energy, leaving the house of Pharaoh, leaving the bed of, of luxury to walk with the people. Y'all ain't talking to wander by himself. Y'all ain't talking in the wilderness, shepherding sheep that didn't even belong to him. Y'all ain't talking. He was a hireling. Y'all ain't talking to but benefit is somebody else. You're going to let your seasons of isolation, your seasons of wandering, and then let the frustrations of people make all of that nothing. You still don't get the promise. You still don't get to the promised land because of the frustrations of people. But lover, you need to learn how to deal with frustrations sharply and wisely. Are you understanding? Because your irritation and your frustration is the water on the fire of the spirit. And that's why there's no motivation. That's why, glory God, where places you should be motivated in, you don't even feel motivated no more. You don't even want to do it anymore. You know why? Because you let the frustration of people water down your fire, water down your ambition, water down your motivation, water down your pursuit of God. And you've got to call the devil a liar today. And you'll say that fire that's within me today, I'm not going to let frustration water that down. I'm going to keep the fire burning. I'm going to Keep the energy going. Are you hearing this today? Hallelujah to the Lord.
mountain, oh yes, God. God. Chopped all the way. Yes, God. God said, Moses, thank you for what you've done. But I'm going to show you the promise. But you're not going to be able to go over. So what God does, God himself causes Moses to die. Beloved of God, the third thing I want to share with you is, glory to God, glory to God, Moses dies on purpose. Moses dies on purpose. It was not an accident. God was instituting another shift in Israel. God was instituting another shift, Lord God, in the people of God's lives where the Moses that was alive might have been a hindrance to a larger group of people moving forward. But love of God, let me say this to you, whether you like it or not, Lord God, don't you put your deliverance in the hand of one person. Don't you put your victory in the hands of one person. Whenever God knows that you've got your whole life in the hands of one person, he'll let that person die out. He'll let that person be disconnected. He'll let that person dry out. He'll let that person act funny on you. Because God will say, ah, this ain't going to be in the hands of flesh and blood. He's saying, not by might, nor by power, but it's going to be done by my spirit. Yes. Moses dies on purpose. And it wasn't because of him. It was because of God. The Bible said God allows Moses to die. And God himself buries him. Watch this. God himself buries the body of Moses. Because he did not want the people to find him. Y'all ain't talking. This is why people, Lord God, they used to be sometimes tight with, you can't even find them no more. They put your number on the block list. Lord God, how did my, I hear what I'm saying to you. It's kind of like they're hiding from you. You're saying, my God, I used to see them all the time. Now I don't see them no more. Sometimes God will hide people from you. And God will hide that sometimes the people that hurt you, because you don't want your heart talk back up. God wow. won't let you see them for years. Wow. Yes. 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 And they'll live right around the corner from you. Wow. Four houses down. And God will let you try past their house every day and never let you see them. Wow. God yes. healed the body of Moses. Hallelujah. Because he didn't want the people to go to the grave and memorialize a place he was calling them from. Right. He didn't want the people to romance their past. Yes. He wanted the people, glory to God, to move on to get past Moses. Come on, Barso. Y'all talk. Y'all talk. Y'all talk. If they knew where the grave was, they would have gone there. They would have set up a monument. They would have set up a memorial. They would have planted a church. Y'all ain't talking. They would have built their lives around a location where the body of Moses was because in their eyes, Moses was the greatest thing they had ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever one thing is the greatest thing you've ever seen, you will look forward to something that's better. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't talking to me. So God, God hides the body of Moses. He doesn't tell them the location. So there in Joshua, chapter 1, the Lord announces to Joshua. God tells Joshua, let me tell you what I've just done. He says, he says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Can somebody shout dead? Dead. He's not coming back. It's not going to be revived. It's not going to be resurrected. It might hurt your heart, but sometimes God has to announce to you relationships, connections, partnerships that are dead. Stop fasting all the people that God has intentionally removed. Oh God, I wish they would come back in my life. Oh God, that was my greatest help. Oh God, send them back home. Oh God, send this person back. God is saying, that is dead. Cry, mourn, but get up and move on. That's right. Hallelujah. He says, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Don't look for him. Because, beloved, you have to realize why God said this. 
Realize why God said this. Because there was times, there were times when Moses went up in the mountain and stayed, Lord God, and the people assumed he was dead, but he always came back. So God wanted them to know this time is not coming back. He's not coming back. It's not going to be revived. It's not going to be resurrected. I have something else for you. Lord God, it's time to get past it. Somebody say, get past it. That's part one of the series that I'm going to talk to you about today. I want you to realize that, you, that you've got to get past it. And sometimes this is easier said than done. Lord God, where it deals with matters of the heart. But beloved of God, many of you have been mourning for too long. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel, Lord God, was mourning over Saul. Because he, he was handpicked by God. It was Samuel that anointed Saul. So after Saul gets rebellious and gets prideful, Samuel starts to grieve. Samuel starts to mourn. And God says to him, how long will you mourn over Saul? See, I've rejected him. I've pushed him out. I've denied him. Wake up. I've got another king. I know it's disappointing. I know it's damaging. I know it hurt you. But how long you gonna mourn? You gonna oh, mourn since fine. 2015. That's you gonna mourn since 2014. Every year, I'm still giving you dreams, but you lack the motivation to get up and run after it because you're mourning over what was happening. I'm not helping somebody today. God is in my shutdown. God says, time to take off your green clothes. It's time to take off your morning clothes. It's time to put on the oil of giving talking. Messiah. It's time to rejoice for the David that God is anointing right now. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody said there's a David coming. There's a David coming. Listen, he says, he says, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. He says, he says, now, he says, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people unto the land. He said, there are people and generations that are connected to you and their deliverance is being delayed by your pause. Your family's deliverance is being delayed by your pause because you won't get up. You won't get up. You won't get up. Somebody said, I don't feel it yet. Then you don't have to feel it yet. Just get up. Somebody said, I don't feel. I don't feel. I don't feel. You don't have to feel. Just get up. Just get up. Because if you get up, something is going to be triggered. Something is going to start to move. I'm not my son. Earth is going to recognize that there's a greater source of power under my son that's not connected to Moses, it's connected to God. Yes. Oh, oh, my son, somebody shout, get up! Get up! Glory to God. He says, Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan. Arise. Get, arise. get over it. Arise. Get over it. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but God is trying to shake you back to life. God I said, God is trying to shake you back to life. He said, Arise. Get over it. You and all the people I've connected to you. Beloved, you'll never know the people. That's going to be your help until you get up. Because God's not trying to send people to oppose people. Oh, Jesus. I said, God is not trying to send people to oppose people. God's not going to send people to you if all they're going to do is sit in your living room while you whine and cry and while you mourn over your past. God ain't sending your help. If you want your help to come, I'm a shy. Your help has to find you doing something. Glory to God. I said your help is going to come when they find you doing something. Yes, yes, Glory yes. to God. Tomorrow morning you just need to get up. Glory to God. Determine to get over it. And you'll say, my son now, you'll start to see God bring help to you. You'll say, well, where was this help all this time when I was praying about this thing? God is saying, no, 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 I can't sit it yet. Glory to God, because you were in pause. Honor my son. God's not trying to cause a thousand people to come to your personal graveyard. Are you understanding here? you got all the bodies of your past friends in front of you while you're crying over it. God ain't trying to get you. Glory to God in your graveyard. That's why Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. Yes. You move on what I'm calling you to do. Yes. That's right. You 
you move on what I'm calling you to do. Are you hear what I'm saying to you, beloved? He, so he says, arise. He said, I said, arise. Come and stand strong and loud. Say, arise. He said, get over this Jordan. You and all the people unto the land which I do give them. He, watch what he says, people. See, y'all y'all got to get excited about this. He said, every place that the sole of your foot tread upon. That's why you're not gaining territory. That's why you're not expanding. That's why God's not enlarging the place of your tent. Because you're not moving. Your territory is expanding when your feet start to move. Are you understanding? If I were you, wherever you are sitting right now, just move your feet a little bit. See, let me tell you something. The moment you start moving your foot, feet and you say, I'm not going to be in pause. I'm not going to be delayed no more. I'm going to get up and get over it. God said, I'm going to enlarge your territory. If you move. Yes, Lord. If you move. Yes. If you move. If you move. Some of us are only if you move. God's not trying to give you more space if you're not willing to move. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. Did you hear what I said? I said, God's not trying to give you more space if you're not willing to move. What is God looking like giving you a brand new house if you're not willing to move from where you are to go and live in it? Are you understanding? God said, if you want to live in it, get ready to move. Get ready to move. Come on, Pastor. And be willing to move. Well, so I want to give you a 10 bedroom house and here you go. Oh, well that's nice, but I don't want to move up my neighborhood. You crazy. Are you understanding what I'm telling you here? That's how some of us are emotionally. That's how some of us are mentally. We say, God, I want you to lower the place in my tent. God, I want you to lengthen my cords. God, I want you to strengthen my, the, the current of my habitation. God, I want you to give me more room, God. I want you to expand me from the left, the north, the left, the right, Lord God. Expand me the north, the south, the east, in the west. But then when God does it, God, I don't want to move up my city. I don't want to move this here. I don't want to do ministry nowhere else. All I want to do is ministry here in Charleston. I don't want to do ministry in no other state. Here's why I'm only comfortable at. God said, I can't expand you then. You've got to be willing to get up and move. That's right. He said, you and all those people, are you getting this? Yes. Everyone that I have connected to you, he said, every place that the soul of your foot tread upon, that I've given you, as I said unto Moses. Watch this, verse number seven. He said, only be thou strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do everything I'm telling you. He says, turn up from it, from the right hand or the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. He watched us. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Watch this, that you may observe to do it, that you will make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. Yeah. Get this point down in your notes. Stop attempting to resurrect what God allowed you to lose on purpose. Stop attempting to resurrect what God allow you to lose on purpose. There are some things that God never intended to come back. And then there are things that God only took away for a season. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 34 and 5 talks about God burying the body of Moses. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4 says, cast your bread upon the waters for many days you will find it. So there are things that God uh, allows to die that will never come back. And then there are things that God allows you to lose and to give that in, in the next seasons will come back to you. In 2 Kings chapter 6 verse number 5. Bible said the servant was working for the house of God, building a house for the sons of the prophets under the leadership of Elisha. The Bible said he borrows an axe head. That axe head falls into the water. He starts to cry because it was borrowed. The man of God waved a stick over the waters. The Bible said the axe head swims. Why? All right. So there are things that God allows you to lose, but under the right hand and under the power of God, God allows it to come back. Some of us have their things that are coming back. In Luke 15, verse number 8, the Bible says, What woman, I know what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light the candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. 
Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. So there are things that God allows to die that will never be resurrected. And then there are things that God allows you to lose that will come back in its proper season. Watch this. If it is the heart of God for you to get it back, you don't have to make it come back. It'll come back on its own. That's right. Come on, Pastor. You're not talking. Nah, 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 nah. And if you lost it through your power, Lord God, God will give you the light to find where you lost it at. You don't have to make anyone come back in your life. That's right. Talk good, church. I said, you don't have to make anyone come back in your life. If it's a divine connection, those things sometimes get in the middle of it. Divine connections always come back together. Lord have mercy. John chapter 11 verse number 1. The Bible says that there were two sisters, Mary and Martha. That a brother, Lazarus, and Jesus was very close to this family because it was this Mary that anointed his feet with ointment. It was that Mary. She had she had ministered to the Lord in a very special way. She had ministered to the Lord in ways that no one else was willing to do. The Bible even specifically says that when Mary starts to do that, the people in the house start to get married. They start to say, well, she should have sold that oil. She didn't have to pour that on his feet. She didn't have to do all of that. Lord God, and sometimes there are those of us that have done some special things for the Lord that other people around us were not willing to do. So when we lose things, we take it as a personal assault against us. Can y'all talk to me? You take it personally because you say, God, when I did that, no one was willing to do that. How in the world are you going to allow this to die and this to be taken away and me to lose this? Not me. I can understand y'all ain't talking good if you allow Sister Mary to go through that, but not me. Not when I gave up my house. Not when I did this for you. How are you going to let me go through this when I was a great Talk to me. When I was a great giver. How you gonna let me lose my job and let me car get repossessed and let my house get foreclosed? Not me. Maybe deacon so and so. Maybe mother so and so. But not me. Are y'all talking to me here? It was that Mary. It was that same Mary that had done some special ministry for the Lord. Special ministry for the Lord. She they sent her to Jesus. Watch this, beloved. Saying, the Lazarus, who you love, is at the point of death. They didn't just say Lazarus. They didn't just say our brother. They said Lazarus, who you love. Mm, you're right. only talking. That's talk. right. That's right. That's right. The one you love. Yeah, yeah. The one you love is at the yeah. point of death. Why were they saying that? They were saying that so he could hurry up. That's right. Because you, you move quicker and you move faster. And you move faster when it's someone you love. That's, that's right. Somebody that's right. come and answer the goodness of Jesus. When it's someone you love, you move quicker. That's right. You get in a hurry. But the Bible, the Bible specifically says that Jesus, after hearing the word concerning the Lazarus, he stays an extra two days. He does not rush. He does not get in a hurry. He does not do what many of us would have done. He does not, Lord God, speed down the highway at 90 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour oh, yeah. trying to get there. He oh, does not God. run through red lights, y'all are talking on oh. stop signs to get there. He stays there two additional days. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? And the Bible says the Lord tells him that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. It amazes us in that glory of God. We yes. always say, Father, get the glory out of this, but we don't ever let God's glory be seen. We want our might to be seen. We want things just to be straight and narrow. But if you want the glory of God to be seen, then you're going to have to allow the sufferings of this present time sometimes to occur in your life. You want the glory of God to be seen, but you don't ever want to let you don't ever want to allow God to put you in a challenge or to put you in a situation where His power can be seen through. You don't want the test and the trial, and when you don't allow that to come, you block the glory of God. Yeah. Hallelujah! Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. 
Bible says there was a man that was born lame. Man that was born lame. They brought the man to Jesus and they said, who sinned? Did his mama sin or his daddy sin that he's like this way? Yeah. Jesus said, no one did nothing or anything for this to be. There are some things that have happened in your life. You did nothing wrong. It was just in the process of God that his glory was to be seen. Jesus said, nobody did nothing wrong. I just wanted my glory to be seen. Mm -hmm. So I allowed this boy to be born lame and to go through this for these seasons of time so that one day you would bring him to me in front of all these people and I, I was able to show you my glory. Sometimes God will let you go through a season and a process of time. Y'all ain't talking here today. God will let you go through, go through, go through for a season and a process of time until you get the right audience, until you get in the right season, until you get the, before the right eyes. Y'all ain't talking. And then bam, God lets you see his glory. And let me tell you something. If you've ever seen the glory of God work in a situation when that glory of God shows up, then the answer of the why shows up too. And you say, God, now I know why you let me go through this. Now I know why I have to suffer. Now I know why I have to go through it. Glory. I said when the glory shows up, the answer to the why shows up too. Get that in your notes. When the glory shows up, the answer of the why shows up too. That's good. So Jesus stays two days longer. Bible says, finally when he gets there, Lazarus is dead. People have already wrapped him up. Put him in a tomb. Rolled the stone mm -hmm. in front of the tomb. Mary and Martha and meet him and says, if you had been here, our brother Lazarus would not have died. Jesus says, well, I'm the resurrection of the life. Amen. Uh, That's right. I'm the resurrection of life. I'm here now. Mm -hmm. I'm here now. I'm here now. There's some things that God gets buried for a season of time, but when God shows up, recognize that he's there now. Amen. Are you understanding? He might not have come when you haven't wanted him to come, but he's here now. That's what Jesus was trying to get the man in the pool to understand. You might have been here for 38 years, but I'm here now. And God, you shot. And God knows how to restore the years that the locust, the caterpillar, and the power worm has eaten away. God knows how to give you back your recovery. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God will make the past 15 years seem like 24 hours God, if you let his glory show up. How much fun now? You yes. won't even remember what that name was if you let his glory show up. Yes. Yes. You said, who? Who are you talking about? Who his name is again? Where her name is again? When you let the glory show up, the glory wipes out the past. And God said, behold, I've come to do a new thing. And it's going to spring forth if you let my glory show up. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He says, I, I'm here now. Watch this. Jesus, in, in John 11 and 43, Jesus cries with a loud voice. Jesus cries with a loud voice. No one had the power in their voice to bring back dead Lazarus but the Lord. You're crying. Is not going to bring it back. You have to wait until Jesus shows up. Y'all are talking. Only Jesus is authorized to bring back the dead. That's right. Lord have mercy. Only Jesus. Lord have mercy. If you do it, they'll come back for a season and they'll cut you deeper than they did the last time. Y'all ain't talking here today. You'll bring them back in your life and they'll hurt you worse than they did the last time. Only Jesus is authorized to Bible says when she oh yes Lord was on that cross his blood hit the earth Bible says the earth shook and dead people came back from the grave they had to send them back to the ground y'all are talking the time isn't yet only Jesus has that authorization one day Jesus was walking past the funeral. Y'all ain't talking. Call the man. Y'all ain't talking. They were carrying and burying him back to life. Only 
Jesus to yes, authorize God. the dead to come back to life. You're going to have to wait till God call them back. And yes. whenever God doesn't call back, you let it stay dead. That's yes. right. Yes. Let it stay dead. Lord have mercy. That's good. Lord have mercy. I was said, and then thus he had spoken cry with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said the dead came forth, bound hand and foot with gray clothes. Lord God, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus says unto them, loose him and let him go. Watch this, get this. Stop calling back what God is silent about. If God's not talking about it, then you don't talk about it. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? I'm talking about when you're trying to bring things back. You're trying to do things back in your own power. If God is not giving it in your heart for it to come back and God's not bringing it in your heart y'all ain't talking about that right. then you don't call right. back when God's not calling That's back right. if God isn't calling it back then you keep your mouth shut right. yeah. keep it shut come on, yes 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 and here's the, the part B of that when God calls it back he'll use the people who tied it up and buried it to do the work in loosing it and letting it go Jesus called them back he did untie him. Jesus, Jesus. Let me rewind that five seconds. Jesus called Lazarus for, but Jesus didn't untie him. He made the people who tied him lose him. And see, you're, if you call it back, then you'll have to do the work of loosing it. You'll have to do the work of repairing it. You have to do the work and y'all ain't talking and getting everything all round, unwound and all this kind of stuff. Using your energy, using your money, using your resources. But God said, if you let me bring it back, I'll pay for it. Y'all ain't talking and I'll make other people be employed in doing it. You'll be laying in your bed and God will have your enemies untying the thing they tied up. Y'all ain't talking. God will have people go back on the things they said about That's you. Right. They'll have the men pull and say, I lied on her. I lied on him. I did them wrong. I'm the one that tried to do them dirty. You ain't talking. God's going to make your enemies untie you. That's right. Glory. Glory. No, no, no. No, get this. Get this, beloved. I got to let you go. I got to so much more, but let me, let me get this. Whenever we were talking, Whenever when we were talking earlier about Moses, we were talking earlier about Moses, right? How God buried Moses and did not tell the children of Israel what Moses' location was. Y'all remember that just a few minutes ago? God didn't tell them. God didn't tell them. Yep, yeah. God didn't allow them to attempt to resurrect Moses. He didn't allow them to do that, right? Because if God would have resurrected Moses for the cries of Joshua and the children of Israel, that it would have stopped the help for Jesus. I need to show you this. God, God, God at some point brings Moses back, resurrects Moses. Watch this. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because in Matthew 17 and 2, when Jesus was praying at the Mount of Transfiguration, and he's praying and he's changing. The Bible said while his disciples are sleeping, Jesus is changing. That's why you don't need to be on pause for no one. Are you understanding here? While they're sleeping on you, you keep changing. While they're young and talking, while they're acting like funny with you, you keep changing. You keep transitioning. Don't you let them stop your next dimension because they don't believe in you. You keep changing. So when they wake up, the Bible says in Matthew 17 and 2, the Bible said that he was transfigured before them and his face began to shine like the sun. His raiment was white as a light. And behold, there appeared unto them who shows up at the season of God, Moses and Elijah. Two people that God allowed to be caught up but then allow the people to find the bodies. Mm. You're not talking. See, if God would have resurrected Moses for Joshua, then Jesus' help would not have shown up when he needed it. you are not talking. What you wanted to come back then would have blocked what you need now. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Apostle. Rewind. Five seconds. What you wanted to come back then would have blocked what you needed now. That's why God had to let it stay dead for all these years. Wow. Because right now, somebody said right now, right now. 
I need what I lost. I need what I lost. If God would have let it come back five years ago, earlier this year, That's then fine. you would have already spent it. You would have already used That's it. Fine. Y'all ain't talking here today. You would have already wasted it. But guess what? God has, and y'all ain't talking, God has a harvest for every seed you sown, everything you lost, for a situation that you need right now. Let God bring it back when he calls you. God. So Moses shows up at the right season, at the right time, because it was God that called it back, called it back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what, what am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say to you, don't place too much value on things behind you. Yes, that's good, that's good. While devaluing the things in front of you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good. You got so much value on the past that you're not even looking, Lord God, that the future has more than the past can yes. ever offer. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. God is calling Lot and his wife out of a place of being destroyed. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's bringing them up out of it. He tells them, whatever you do, don't look back. Mm-hmm. What does Lot's wife do? Lot's wife turns around. She becomes a pillar of salt. What does that represent? Pause. Delay. Stagnation. Huh? Why? Because she had value where she had come from more than where she was going. Beloved, you've come from a good place. You had some great things. But the next thing God does is going to be greater than the last thing that you see. Amen. Yes, it is. Don't place too much value on what you lost. I know it was good stuff. I know it's good people. But what's before you is more valuable. Yeah. I'll, I'll continue this next Sunday. Do you get something out of this today? Yes. Yes. Come on, let's go ahead and stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've given your people your word. Yes, God. I've told them what you've given to me. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We put honor on every Moses, every bridge, yes. every person, every connection, every event and circumstances that brought us from one place to another. And Father, we put honor on it in gratefulness, yes, God. knowing that because of that, you were able to bring us to a wealthy and a large place, a land. That we can breathe and live on our own. 